Introduction to the International Accounting Standard Board's Conceptual Framework for Financial Reporting. The Conceptual Framework for Financial Reporting, also known as the Framework, is a document prepared by the International Accounting Standards Board. The Framework is a statement of principles, a roadmap to be used for the development of new accounting standards. The Framework itself is not an accounting standard and in situations where there is a conflict between the framework and a specific provision of an accounting standard, then the accounting standard takes precedent. The contents of the framework include the objectives of the financial statements, the underlining assumptions of the financial statements, qualitative characteristics of financial statements, the elements of the financial statements, and recognition of the elements of the financial statements. The objective of financial statements. By this we mean why the financial statements are actually prepared. Financial statements are prepared to provide the financial position of a reporting entity. The financial information provided by the financial statements is useful to existing and potential investors, lenders and other creditors of the entity. The framework seeks to ensure accounting standards have a consistent approach to problem solving. By providing a guide for the preparation of financial statements, when the preparer is faced with accounting issues that have not been addressed directly in an accounting standard. Meaning if you come across a transaction for which there isn't an accounting standard, the conceptual framework provides you with some basic principles and a framework to help you decide how to account for that particular transaction. Underlining assumptions. Financial statements are prepared under the going concern basis. The going concern principle is the assumption that an entity will remain in business for the foreseeable future, usually meaning more than 12 months. All financial statements except cash flow information must be prepared following accruals basis. In accounting, the accruals concept means that expenses and revenues are recorded in the period in which they occur, rather than when the cash is received in or paid out. Qualitative characteristics of financial statements. Relevance. Information is deemed useful if it is considered relevant, i.e. capable of making a difference in the decision made by its users. Remember, information can only be useful if it is material, and information is only material if its omission or misstatement could influence the decision of the user. Faithful representation. Information should be faithful in its presentation i.e. complete, neutral, and free from error. Comparability. The information must be comparable to the financial information presented for other accounting periods, so that users can identify trends in the performance and financial position of the reporting entity. Verifiability. Verifiability is the ability to see how an entity arrives at a certain result in the financial statements from the data it provides. Timeliness. Information needs to be up to date and delivered at the right time. Understandability. The information must be readily understandable to users of the financial statements. This means that information must be clearly presented with additional information supplied in the supporting footnotes as needed to assist in clarification. The elements of the financial statements. There are five elements to the conceptual framework. Three elements relating to the statement of financial position, assets, liabilities and equity, and two relating to the income statement, income and expenses. 
assets. An asset is a present economic resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events. For example, the inventory held by an organisation for trading purposes. This is a resource controlled by an organisation in that the organisation has the power to restrict other people's use. As a result of past events, the inventory was purchased in the past. Assets are presented in the financial statements as either being non-current or current assets. Non-current assets. These are assets kept long term in the business, for example, equipment, premises and motor vehicles. Current assets. These are cash items or items that will become cash within 12 months. For example, inventory, receivables or cash. Assets can be tangible or intangible. A tangible asset is an asset that has a physical form. Tangible assets include both fixed assets such as machinery, buildings and land and current assets such as inventory. An intangible asset is an asset without physical form. Intangible assets include the likes of corporate intellectual property such as patents, trademarks and copyrights or the likes of goodwill and brand recognition. Take note the definition of an asset references control and not ownership, meaning a finance lease meets the definition of an asset. A liability is a present obligation of the entity to transfer an economic resource as a result of past events. An economic resource is a right that has the potential to produce economic benefits. For example, a mortgage taken out by an organisation. The organisation has a present obligation to repay the mortgage lender. The transfer of an economic resource from the entity is the mortgage repayments. Current liabilities. These are liabilities that must be settled within 12 months, for example trade payables. Long term liabilities. These are liabilities that become due more than one year in the future, for example bank loans. Take note the definition of a liability references present obligation. This includes liabilities of uncertain timing or amount such as provisions. Equity is the residual interest in the assets of an entity after the deduction of all of its liabilities. Equity represents the amount that is due to the owners of the business. Equity includes the original capital introduced by the owners the accumulated retained profits of the entity and any unrealised gains. Income is the increase in an organisation's economic benefit during the accounting period that results in the increase in capital. This can be in the form of direct inflows of cash, enhancements of assets or in the decrease of a liability. Revenue represents the earnings of an organisation through its ordinary activities and gains represents all other items of income. Expenses are the decrease in an organisation's economic benefit during the accounting period that results in the decrease in capital. This can be in the form of direct outflows of cash, depletion of an asset or in the increase of a liability. Recognition of the elements of financial statements. In order for the five elements, assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses to be recognised in the financial statements, the following criteria must be met. Firstly, the item must meet the definition of an element. Secondly, it must be probable that any future economic benefit associated with the item will flow to or from the entity. And finally, the item's cost or value must be reliably measurable. The objectives of the International Accounting Standard Board's conceptual framework is to improve financial reporting by providing a complete, clear and updated set of concepts. To achieve this, 
the International Accounting Standard Board is constantly updating and improving all aspects of the conceptual framework.